Hello, hello, welcome back. All right, there was a few things that were released. I want to make sure you take a look at them this weekend. And of course, tune in for that call before the market opens. These SNDL corporate slides, I want to make sure that they're not getting misinterpreted. So let's scroll through here because we actually got a few indicators of what the stock price is or should be valued at. And I want to make sure that everybody sees this. So the operating segments, liquor retail, cannabis retail, cannabis and investments. Okay. Those are the pillars. We know the business. Uh, SNDL advantage. Okay. Some, some fluff here. The balance sheet. We've got the comparison, right? I'd like to see True Leaf and Green Thumb in here too, but I mean, it really makes you want to look at Kronos Group if y'all haven't seen that. But long story short, this number right here is the number that they got on August 11th. This is not the share price that they are suggesting. This is how they are calculating all of these figures. So that way you could see a comparison of valuation analysis for the balance sheet. So we'll scroll through here. Same thing for the income statement. Uh, and then here is the sheet that I wanna make sure that everybody sees. And maybe people are talking about this already, but here's the current share price. Once again, 277. And what Zach or the team is saying when they put these slides together is if you add these three together and subtract this one, you get $3.53. So that is, SNDL is currently trading $121 million or, you know, uh, below NAV of its cash, uh, strategic investments, and credit portfolio. So if, if you see right here, it says the current share price. And then right here, the difference would be $277 or whatever it is now, I mean, I think the the price is actually very close to 277 Now, if you have not watched the video right previous to this, I will tell you to go back and look at it. It kind of explains what happened with the share price. I mean, obviously, we all wanted to see this get some kind of push. We wanted to see it double. That didn't happen. I think that people are still trying to understand what is happening with this company and what it's done with this liquor retail brand. Now, Maybe a lot of that's been digested already by analysts, and that's why we didn't see any movement in this stock the last two quarters when we got a heads up. Maybe they priced this in because this has been delayed since last year. So maybe this was priced in and why it was 17 times price to sales, and now we're you know standing at about 11, or maybe it's starting to catch up with the rest of the market. So if you scroll through here, it's got the rest of the highlights. Uh, there's not really anything else that I would really want to point out. So let's go straight to the news release because I've got some things highlighted in here. So on New Cannabis Ventures, I don't know if Zach or somebody from the team had a PR ready to you know send it out because this got published just as soon as uh, you know we were notified. You know, I, I mean, when the financials came out, this came out. So everyone knows at 8:30. You know they're going to have this call on Monday, and I'll definitely be tuned in for this one. Uh, so SNDL Incorporated, they changed the name. Nothing significant there. Of course, we were tuned in for the Alcana acquisition. I mean, everything's finalized. We've got the numbers. And here, this was supposed to be a 1,900% increase. It was actually a 2,344% increase. So we, we see all of these numbers they look great. Everything in yellow is a positive. And then the stuff that is in this, I don't know what color you would call this, what, a blue? We'll, we'll call it blue. Maybe it's green. Maybe I'm colorblind. 74 million. This is where people were starting to get a little bit upset. And rightfully so, because these investments that he's doing in other equities, it's just not quite working out. So, I mean, this was a concerning number, but I would say there's more good news in here than bad. And it really doesn't justify the price moving down as much as it did. Now, there's some things that I was looking for in, in this, and I want to tell you about it because uh, everything I have highlighted in here is something that I've already went through and read. So there's just a few things that I want to point out. So we've got uh, the liquor sales, and it did talk about how the customer count was down by 5% year to date largely due to the return to on-premise consumption in a post-COVID environment. So basically what it's saying right here is we're not seeing as much traffic in the liquor stores because people are going out to restaurants, bars, and they're, they're drinking out instead of consuming and taking it home. So we're starting to see a little bit of a pullback there. 
I think that's reasonable, but it does say average basket size up 2%. SNDL is exploring opportunities to expand, which is good because what you want to see is growth. And that's why I've talked about previously that they were really highlighting Novus, Nova Cannabis, but I really wasn't hearing anything until they highlighted one of the stores on their Twitter page of the other of, of the other side of the business. So I was encouraged to see that. But there's some other things that I highlighted in here. Um, you know, the Spirit Leaf store count, 20 corporate stores, 83 franchise stores. I was really wanting to hear more about this and whether or not they planned on expanding this or not. So private label with uh, the Spirit Leaf selects, you know, We've got some 15.4 uh, million comparable to 11 million as far as the gross revenue. So that was good. Net loss was 8 million versus uh, 75.4. Adjusted EBITDA, 3.4 uh, comparable of a negative 11. I mean, so there was a lot of good news in here. How about this? I mean, three. $3.18 compared to $169. I mean, Elon Musk would love this number right here. But uh, I, I just, I see a lot of positives. I know that in the medical cannabis side of the house, they can get up to $850 from listening to one of the Tilray calls. But they said they got to be careful. They may only get about $350 for what they're getting now in $850. So it's good to see that they have that cost basis. So cost of sales per gram sold for 264 comparable to 176 so the company's moving away from a business to business bulk flower transactions that made up a large portion of their mixed sales in the second quarter so the reason that this is that color you can see why gross margin results in the second quarter of 2022 negative 4. Uh, 4.3 million uh, versus in just inventory impairment so I mean, they did some investments in supply chain, so it looks like there's still room for improvement. They do have their THC. It's high. I mean, look, 25.1, previously 24.3. That's something that they've worked hard to improve. Large new pack formats. Company expects margin growth to impact in the short term That while they bring this new marketing. So they, they've got a new strategy. It's going to have an impact potentially in the next quarter. Okay, this is something that I really wanted to point out because in this call, I really want to know that Zach even understands what's happening in the United States and what's happening in Germany because if this company is going to be taken as a serious player in the cannabis market, he's got to have entry or a plan for those two major markets. I mean, he, he there is a oversupply in the Canadian market and right here Israel they are also oversupplied matter of fact they're not paying their bills to people that they're sending this stuff to so even though he's got this international export permit I mean with Israel in the third quarter this means nothing to me so I mean I would like some more clarity if those payment terms are up front or if you know they got like some kind of 60 90 day payment terms and most likely that's that's what that is. But I do know from listening to one of Tilray's calls that this is something that is 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 an area of concern. This is not a growth area, Israel. So it plans on expanding its national footprint to 10 provinces by introducing SNDL's brand to new products. So that's good. 10 provinces. So I mean it looks like a little bit of expansion there. Loss of 35.1 million. And this is where we're going to the investment section, and this wasn't this wasn't great. Okay, so they've got a total uh, capital that's deployed of of six hundred and eighty nine, but this this just isn't going well. I mean, it, it, man, it was a bad time to deploy capital, and hopefully that will recover. General administration expenses. Now, when they combined the companies, they were supposed to see better cost synergies. So. I mean, this is an area that I hope is just going to be like a one-off. And I don't have a problem with increased salaries and wages and general expenses, but let's watch how many steak dinners we're having and plane tickets we're going over internationally and cannabis tours we're doing and late nights. 
So, I mean, that that's my only concern. You know, have fun, but let's not <laughs> let's not be undisciplined with the cash up there in the in the uh, general administration or administrative uh, expenses. Now, net loss here, you know, seventy four million. I think everybody was like, "What are you doing?" And this this is the section right here. Pause the screen if you want the breakdown of what's going on. There's lots happening here with this seventy four million. Matter of fact, I've got kind of a breakdown sheet that shows you here that I downloaded. And the earnings loss before taxes just straight across. So if you if you want to check that out, pause the screen, check this out. But the big takeaway here is we're getting very close to it. Uh, for the six months ending in, in June 30th of 2022, the company purchased and canceled 0.5 million common shares at a weighted average price of $3.86 or two dollars and 98 cents and this you for those of you that know the the low price before the reverse stock split was 29 cents this was this was low so at least they know how to buy common shares low I would say the price Zach is strategically low for this call and Zach you have to do better on this share buyback I was shocked to see that out of I think it's a hundred million dollars that only two million dollars had been executed. I'm talking about what is that? Two percent? I mean, it's really easy math on that. This is absolutely tragic that we haven't done a better buyback. I hope during this earnings call, he not only stresses the fact that this is a three dollar fifty cent stock, but also executes immediately after the earnings call this buyback. That's two. <laughs> I mean, this expires uh, November 19th of 2022. We've got uh, here the Alcana section, which it says Al Alcana integration update, but then down here it's got value buds, private uh, label flower products. So not much to measure here. I, I really wasn't blown away by these bullets. Facilitate customer relationships. I don't know how you measure that. Capture additional economies of scale. That's okay. Uh uh, optimize offerings, pricing, and promotions. Okay, I could see how you could put that into somebody's strategic goals. But there wasn't anything else that was blowing me away there. I was looking for something in here, honestly, that was going to help me say, wow, it looks like we're going to be making a lot more money in the future. This growth makes so much sense. I see something really smart that the business is doing. But I just, I mean, that was absent for me. It basically said, look, this is where we're at right now. So hopefully during the call, what we'll get is a better understanding of where the business plans on going because we see where it's at right now. And honestly, I think we have to get over $3. Like I hope after, after Zach talks during this call, I mean, we at least deserve to be over the $3 mark after this call. If this sinks anywhere under... $2 and 70 cents. I, I just have to tell you to be patient. I just don't believe that the market is in alignment with what's happening with the share price. They just don't align right now. So until we get closer to the Fed meeting, I would expect to pull back in this price. But based on these results, I just don't see enough justification for this price to be sinking right now. So hopefully, and, and this is what I'm hoping, after Zach's call, we will see a slight increase in the price. This isn't going to go parabolic. It's not on any trending list. Retail investors, for the most part, have left this stock and they've moved on to electric boats or something magic or whatever, or Bed Bath & Beyond, some terrible plays, I'm sure. But this is a real stock. It's a real stock. It may not be a real good stock, but it's definitely a real stock that's undervalued. And, uh, you know, hey, that's all I got, guys. I hope this helped. I'm going to get this one out to you. And I hope everybody's enjoying their weekend. I would just say if uh, the response to this r ruined your weekend, don't let it. Just wait for Monday. Be optimistic. All right. Thanks for watching.